There's no question that conditioned attics can provide a lot of durability benefits when designed and constructed properly to mitigate condensation. We can locate our ductwork and mechanicals in the attic space since it's conditioned without the energy penalties, poor indoor air quality, or the risk of depressurizing the home. Unvented roof assemblies with conditioned attics are significantly safer in terms of wildfire risk as well, since it prevents embers from being sucked into the attic space. This is actually how the fire spread so rapidly in the recent round of LA fires. They are also a lot safer when exposed to high wind speeds, such as during hurricanes or tornadoes, and you can even get bonus rooms out of that conditioned attic space. Overall, we get full environmental control of our building when we have a conditioned attic. However, the biggest downside of a conditioned attic is that they are generally not cheap compared to a standard vented attic because we have to plan for condensation control, which usually means that we're either installing exterior rigid insulation above the roof sheathing to warm up that condensing surface, or we are installing closed cell spray spray foam on the underside of the roof sheathing to move that condensing surface inwards and to prevent warm, humid air from coming into contact with that cold sheathing. However, there is one other strategy that you can use if you are in a warm climate, that being IECC climate zones 1, 2, and 3 to build an extremely affordable unvented roof assembly for your conditioned attic without compromising long-term durability. This is a vapor diffusion port. This is a strategy that we have been using with a lot of our clients in warm climates, especially in places like California, where there's a significant wildfire risk, as well as in places like Florida, where we really don't want to deal with all the excess humidity entering the attic and condensing on air conditioning, ductwork, and other cold surfaces. Now, we already have a video discussing vapor diffusion ports, but we thought we'd walk through this mock-up of one of our standard diffusion port designs so that you can visualize the assembly build up a little bit better. As you can see, all of the components in this assembly are things you can get off the shelf from pretty much any home improvement store, and the buildup isn't anything really out of the ordinary, except for a couple of small but important differences. Now, just a refresher on how vapor diffusion ports work. The warm, humid air in the building has a tendency to migrate upwards and accumulate around the ridge or around the highest point of the building. This is a phenomenon called hygric buoyancy, in which the warm, moisture-laden air is less dense than the dry air in the building, displacing the dry air and accumulating in the attic. Now, if we don't have a means to get rid of that moisture and we don't have adequate condensation control in place, this can actually lead to moisture damage and rot. And in fact, this is a common problem in older unvented roof assemblies and even in new construction where the code requirements for unvented roof assemblies have been ignored or overlooked. A vapor diffusion port allows that moisture to escape the building via vapor diffusion while still being watertight and airtight. Remember, in an unvented roof assembly, we don't want to allow any outside air in. Otherwise, it could compromise the integrity of the system. So over the top of the ridge, where we would normally have an opening below the ridge vent cap, we actually cover that opening with a highly vapor permeable membrane that's lapped over the roof underlayment, which is an ice and water shield product, so it's bonded to the sheathing, then we tape it to the ice and water shield with a super aggressive pressure sensitive acrylic flashing tape for one continuous water and air control layer. We can't dry through that ice and water shield because it's a very strong vapor barrier, and the asphalt shingles are also a strong vapor retarder, so the specs of this vapor permeable membrane and the surface area that it covers on the roof are a big deal and can actually be calculated. Now you can actually use something like Tyvek Home Wrap for this vapor open membrane. It's a little over 50 perms, which is plenty for what we are trying to accomplish here, although if you can find it in North American markets, Delta Fox is the most ideal product that we've found for this. It's highly vapor open and it's extremely durable. Now I should mention that we still want that gap to be there at the ridge so that we don't restrict outward vapor flow with the sheathing. Then, installed over the top of the vapor open diffusion port, we actually cap the system with a standard vented ridge cap. Again, very similar to a vented roof. Now the reason for this vented ridge cap is that if we just capped the roof with a standard shingle ridge cap, we can't dry through that, and so moisture would accumulate on the underside of that shingle cap. We have to vent the top of the membrane in order to allow airflow to carry away that moisture that diffuses through that membrane to actually provide the moisture removal benefits. Now, as far as insulation, we can actually use any vapor permeable and air permeable insulation of our choosing, including fiberglass, rock wool, cellulose, wood fiber, or whatever you prefer. That's the primary benefit of the system. We can insulate with such a wide range of materials, especially affordable materials like fiberglass, and the system will still work. We can also use a vapor diffusion port on a lot of other roof systems, like tile roofs or standing seam metal roofs. Basically, you're just switching out the roof covering materials and the style of ridge vent cap. 
A few other things that you need to be aware of. Vapor diffusion ports currently are only approved for roof pitches of 3 and 12 or greater. Remember that we are using hydric buoyancy as a driving force, so we need moisture to accumulate easily at the highest point. We also need some form of mechanical ventilation in that attic space, which is simple to achieve. Provide supplier to the attic space at a rate of 50 CFMs per thousand square feet. If you can't get the supply air in the attic space, some states and local jurisdictions allow you to use a dehumidifier. This is just a belt and suspenders approach so that the vapor diffusion port is not challenged and so that you are operating at a reasonable interior relative humidity. Finally, in terms of ridge vent sizing, use a ratio of 1 to 150 diffusion port area to attic ceiling area. So if you have a 2,000 square foot ceiling, the total diffusion port area has to be at least 13.33 square feet. You can split that up across multiple ridges and the opening dimensions as long as it is installed at the highest points of the roof. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful, especially to those who are trying to save a little bit of money on their building without compromising durability. This is one of the best ways that we have found that can really reduce the complexity and labor cost involved with an unvented roof system with a conditioned attic. For colder climates, it's not always that simple, and so we have to resort to other strategies. Guys, if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.